Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to look at how we define rate laws and we're one example of something called the method of initial rates. Our objective is to use experimental data to write rate laws for chemical reactions and the technique we're using is called the method of initial rates. Each reaction has a unique rate law. If we're looking at a generic reaction, little a times uh, big A. So that means that the uh, little a is the uh, coefficient and big A is the chemical. And then we're reacting it with uh, little b's worth of chemical B to make products. We can write an expression known as the rate law this way. The rate is equal to minus one over A times the change in the concentration of A over time. We could also say that's minus 1 over little b times the change in the concentration of b over time. But what we're mostly interested in is this stuff all the way over on the right-hand side. k times a raised to the nth times b raised to the nth power. So k is what's known as the rate constant. And in the next chapter that we cover, we're going to look at something called an equilibrium constant, which is also a K. So all the way here from the beginning with rate laws, I want to advise you to use a lowercase k for this. In my handwriting, the only way I can distinguish lowercase from uppercase is with cursive. So I always make my uh, rate constants a lowercase cursive k, and then I save my capital printed k for the equilibrium constant. And then the uh, square brackets around A or B mean the molarity of the chemical A or the chemical B. And then N and M refer to the orders with respect to chemicals A and B. So this is kind of a, a weird new term that you need to get familiar with. These exponents are referred to as orders. It doesn't matter which one comes first in the expression and which one comes second. That's not what we're talking about. If the exponent is a 1, we call it first order. If the exponent is 2, we call it second order. If the exponent is 3, we call it third order. So anytime you're asked about the order of a reaction, we're looking for what the exponent is on one of the chemicals. Let's look at some specific examples with respect to this reaction A plus B yields C that has a rate law of K times A cubed times B to the second power. The first question wants to know what is the partial order with respect to A? This is limiting us to reactant A, so it's going to be um, whatever the exponent on A is. And when we're, there's more than one reactant and we're asking about just one, that's known as the partial order. So the partial order with respect to A is the exponent on A, which is three. What is the order with respect to B? Now this question left out the word partial, but it still is restricting us to B. So that's gonna mean what is that exponent just on B? And that's going to be a two. Then it asks, what is the overall order? Well, we get the overall order by adding up all of the partial orders. So that will be a three plus a two, which gives us an overall order of five. Now let's play some math games here. What happens to the rate if A is tripled? So instead of having one for our concentration of A, we change that and we have a concentration of three for A. Well, that three then gets cubed by that exponent of three. So the rate would increase by a factor of three cubed or 27, right? Because three times three is nine times three is 27. Three cubed is 27. What happens to the rate if B is tripled? Well, if we triple B, we're going to be multiplying by three, but that exponent, that order says to square it. So the overall reaction rate would increase by a factor of three squared or nine. 
The rest of this video is going to be looking at something called the method of initial rates. It's an experimental technique where you do a series of experiments on the exact same reaction, but you deliberately change the concentration of one of the reactants. And we're going to determine the orders for each of the individual reactants by writing out the rate law for an experiment and writing out the rate law for a different run of the experiment, and then taking the ratio of those two equations. If you do this right, you can get all kinds of things to cancel out, so you end up with a simple expression that shows um, the ratio of the rates is equal to the ratio of a concentration all raised to an exponent, which is the order. One of the things, or two, two things that you can do to make this process work out more easily is to, first of all, set up your ratios so that the bigger number is on top and the smaller numbers are going to be on the bottom. And then pick two runs of the experiment where all of the concentrations are the same except for just one. And then everything else cancels out and you'll know what the exponent or the order for that one reactant is. Let's work an example of the method of initial rates that has a fairly easy chemical reaction to work with. In this reaction, A yields products. There's only one reactant to worry about. So um, we don't have to worry about picking two experiments where all the other reactants cancel out because there's only one to deal with. Our only concern as we take our ratios is that we want the bigger number on the top and the smaller number on the bottom. So um, let's look at what our rate law says. We have a rate law that says that the rate is equal to some constant times the concentration of A raised to some order. What I'd like to do is take the ratio of two experiments and take the ratio of the rate laws for those two experiments. Now, whether I look at the molarities or whether I look at the reaction rates, the numbers get bigger as the experiment number gets bigger. So let's take experiment two divided by experiment one. Now, if I take the left-hand side of our rate law, that's gonna be this column right here. Right, so the rate is given by this column of data. So for experiment two, the rate was, uh, I'm gonna change this to regular notation, not scientific notation, that's kind of overkill, 0 0.0628, and then divided by the rate for experiment one, which was 0 0.0314. On the right-hand side of our rate law, we have K, times the concentration of A raised to some power. Well, in experiment number two, the concentration of A was 0.1, and we're gonna raise that to the nth. And then for the right-hand side for experiment number one, we're going to have K times 0 0.050 raised to the nth power. All right, right off the bat, I hope you can see that the Ks cancel out. K divided by K, those are just gone. We can simplify the rate ratio a little bit because 0 0.0628 divided by 0 0.0314, that's a nice two, right? 0 0.0628 is two times of 0 0.0314. And then what's left on the right-hand side, 0.1, well, okay, when, let me slow down explain this step. When we have two different numbers that are divided and they're both raised to the same power, we can bring the power outside of the brackets and just have inside of the brackets the uh, division of those two numbers. And so let's simplify this down a little bit more. 0.1 divided by 0 0.05 is 2. So we're looking for the exponent that will make this equation true. And the uh, power that we need here is one, right? Because two to the first is equal to two. And so M will be equal to one. So we're close to finding the rate law, but we're not quite all the way there. We now know what the exponent is, but 
And we still need to get an expression or a number for k, because when you determine the rate law, you need to determine all of the orders, and you need to determine a numerical value for k. So we have the order. What's left is finding k. Well, if I rewrite my rate law with knowing what I know so far, I'm going to do this in the upper left. I've got the rate is equal to k times a raised to the first power, or just k times a. I can rearrange this equation to get an expression for k. I'm going to bring that down to the bottom where I've got a little bit more room to write. If I divide both sides of this equation by a, I'm left with k is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of A. I did one extra little step there from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. I flipped the left and right hand side of this um, equation. I am compelled to do that because of my eighth grade math teacher, Mr. Wilhelm. He would count it wrong if we didn't move the variable we solved for to the left hand side of the equation. So I, I will probably do that to you quite often this semester. All right, now we can take numbers from our data table plug into this expression and get a number for k. We could take the data from experiment one, we could take the data from experiment two, or we could take the data from experiment three. It doesn't matter, we could take any of them. Since we've already used experiments one and two, let's pull the data from experiment three for this one. The rate according to experiment three is 0.125, and the concentration of A is 0 0.200. So if I run that through my calculator, I'll have 0.125 divided by 0 0.2, which is 0.625. And the units on this are going to be, well, let's see, the rate was molarity per second, and we divided by molarity, so that's going to leave us per second or seconds to the minus one power. So our full rate law, if we're going to write, write the whole thing out for our final answer, it would be that the rate is equal to k times the concentration of a raised to the first power, and k is equal to 0.625 per second. Our objective was to use experimental data to write rate laws with the method of initial rates. We saw how to do that, we worked one example problem, and in the next video we'll look through a couple more examples.